Good evening, good evening, good evening. Glad to be online again on tonight. We're here again. Such a time as this. Coming with another lesson or talk or however you want to put it. Um, have with me Reverend John Mason and we're here just to share another word on tonight from the Gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 24th verse. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to look at verse 24, very familiar passage of scripture, very well known often quoted passage of scripture. Jesus says something, Dr. Mason, he said, if any man, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up and take up his cross and follow me. So and tonight we want to Look at that. We don't know how far we're going to get in the lesson. Um, but we'll see what the Lord has to say on tonight. Amen. Dr. Mason, if you don't mind, would you lead us in a word of prayer, sir? Father, we're coming for you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for another day that you allowed us to see. As always, Father, it wasn't a day that was guaranteed, it wasn't promised to us, and we definitely did nothing, Lord, to earn it, but because of grace, because of mercy, yes. your mercies are new every morning. Father, you've seen in your, in your eyesight, Lord, just to let us stay in the land of the living just a little while longer. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for that, Father, and we, we truly praise you for being in control of all of that, Father. Yes, Lord. I love the verse where it says that you who have made us and not we ourselves. Father. Yes, Lord. Uh, Father, you know what's best for us. You always have our best interests at heart. Yes, Lord. So, Father, as we go into the lesson tonight, Father, we ask that you would just give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father. And uh, we ask that your spirit lead us and guide us into all truth. And once it leads us and guides us into all truth, Father, we ask that you illuminate us, cause us to see and understand that very truth that you lead us to. And Father, once we get all the knowledge and all the understanding from this lesson tonight, Father, the number one thing is that we apply it to our life. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we ask that you open up our spiritual ears, open up our spiritual eyes, and most of all, our spiritual hearts, so that we can feast off of your word tonight. And Father, we ask that you would just bless us on the night and bless the ones Amen. that have Jesus. tuned in to listen, Father. Yes, Lord. That we'll be able to say something, Lord, that would be encouraging, yes, inspiring, and something that's going to help them in this Christian journey. We thank you for it right now. We believe it's done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all, when I lost my roof and nose, then said Jesus unto his disciples, it's all right, sister. <laughs> Any man will come after me. Let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Dr. Mason, there's a song that just came to my mind. And the name of that song is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Yes, sir. It says, there is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love 
Lord Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. He said, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. It tells me of a father's smile beaming upon his child. It cheers me through this little while, through desert waste and wild. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. If the truth be told, Dr. Mason, I can always say that I've always loved Jesus. I can always say that I've always honored him and treated him the way that he should have been treated. But one day, I met a man named Jesus. I, I heard Mama talk about it. I know you, you too. I heard Grandmama talk about it. But one day, when I took what they told me, and, and as you just said, that applied it and got to know it for myself. Things turned. Things were different. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do the clubs no more. The alcohol wasn't important no more. I'll be honest, I wasn't heavy in the drugs. I smoked a little marijuana just because of the people I hung around. Right. But once I met him, that stuff changed, man. Desires were different. Thought processes were different. Life became different. Mm -hmm. And Honestly and truthfully, had the Lord not called me to preach, I probably would have been in the world of sin a whole lot more. Probably wouldn't have. I don't think I'd have been came to Christ when I did. Because like a lot of people, I was just going through the motions. Just doing it because you know, that's what you do. Go to church. You know, you go to church. And you go back and live the same life. I hadn't, before my call into the ministry, the gospel ministry, I hadn't did what the first day Jesus said. <laughs> I, I hadn't denied myself. Self was still having a good time at church. Self was going to church. Self was in the church, but the church won't even mm -hmm. exactly. And I ain't the only person that liked that. You know? We just decided we're going to come clean. <laughs> going through the motions. That's what I was doing. But one day, I decided that I had to stop going through the motions and be real about what I was doing. When I look at all that the Lord done for me, I can't talk about nobody else, Dr. Faith. I can only talk about what he done for me. I know some of what he done for you. But I don't know everything. I know what he brought you through. Mm -hmm. You know, you're about what you went through with cancer. But I don't know everything. Right. 
But one day I decided to stop playing and to be real about this thing. And if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to be real. I believe you said there was a little old lady that grew up knowing one of her favorite sayings was be real or be stupid. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I decided to be real. And what that meant was the things that I was doing, I had to get those things up. Stuff that I was faking. Had not, I had, I had not, I had not, I had not denied myself. And Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now, you know. It's not easy to always tell self no. It's true. And anybody that says it is is telling an untruth. I'll just be nice and put it that way. Self enjoys what self enjoys, man. Self wants what self wants. Self likes what self does. It's true. Self enjoyed the life self was living. That's why a lot of people are still out in the world today, because they don't want to give up self. They enjoy the parties. They enjoy the sleeping around. They enjoy the drugs, and the, as the world say, we're going to get turned up. I'm going to turn up this weekend. I heard somebody say that one time. I said, you hope you don't turn up in hell. Turn it up. <laughs> exactly. But when I finally got real about this thing, man, I had to look at this thing. I had to look at it every day. Because it's a constant struggle. It's a constant fight yeah. that people won't talk about. I'm blessed and highly favored in the Lord. I don't have no troubles. You a lie. Job said, man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Mm -hmm. Some folks, well, the devil don't bother me. Well, if the devil don't bother you, it's because he already got you. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't bother him, he ain't going to bother you. True. True. Go ahead, sir. And I, and, I, and I think with with, uh, <clears throat> with most Christians, uh, some Christians, mm -hmm. that we don't realize that we're we're trespassers. Now. Uh, Bible says that Satan is the god of this world. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the prince of the air, so he's ruling right now. He's not in total control. He's not supreme ruler. He's not in total control. God has given him some control. And so he, he, he's basically sort of running the show. Um, one of the things that, that get me more than, than anything else is, is sort of what you just said. Uh, you go out to the grocery store and you meet somebody and uh, church member or, or uh, another Christian mm -hmm. and uh, first thing you do is ask them how they doing and they say uh, I'm doing good you know uh, uh, God is good all the time and all the time God is good I'm like, yeah that's true and then they'll use the one you say I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored you know okay uh, I'm trying to figure out. I only know one person that that will say it to, uh, and that was Mary. So we go uh, there. So, uh, uh, but you know, we. <laughs> <laughs> that's another lesson. Yep, that's another lesson there. And then they would use the other one. Uh, uh, 
To bliss. To be stressed. To be stressed. Oh, in the next. Okay. Um, when a person tells me that, I, I knew they haven't really read scripture. Uh, when you think about David and uh, all of the great patriots. Yeah, Elijah. Moses, exactly. Elijah and all of those great patriots back in the Bible. And, and uh, even the Apostle Paul, when you look at all of these great men and you know women of God, you, uh, all these people were stressed. They showed some form of stress because of everything that they was going through. Yes, sir. Uh, and so when they say that, they tell me all about the I'm blessed and highly favored and God is good all the time, all the time. God is good and too blessed to be stressed. And then as soon as they get through with that, I say, now, I say, I understand all of that. And you're right about everything you just said. I say, but now tell me exactly how you do it. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, Reverend Mason, uh, what's going on is that uh, my, my daughter, you know, she's pregnant, you know, and the guy she's with, he's no good. And uh, my son, he's, he's on drugs, as you know, he keeps breaking into the house. And every time we look around, we got things missing from the house. And we, we believe it's him, right. you know, because he's trying to support his habit. And, you know, and, and, and be honest with you, you know, my husband, he's uh, taking all the money and he's drinking it up. Every week he keeps getting drunk, you know, and bills behind, can't get. I'm like, okay, now we can talk. Now we can talk because now we're in the real world. Right. You know, all that other stuff you're talking about, you must live in a different world than what I live in because I'm, I'm a realist myself. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you that everything is fine if it's not. Because the Bible says, all those that live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. What did Jesus say about that too? Then Jesus say, he says, uh, in this world, you should have tribulation. John 16.33. John 16.33. But he said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The world. But he already told us what's going to be happening. So if you're living in this world where nothing is going wrong, and you're not... <laughs> battling or, or catching hell left and right, then I need to know how you're doing that. <laughs> because if you're a Christian and you're a trespasser, and the thing is, is that you've changed fathers too. Because Satan used to be your father. But now he's not since you have accepted Christ. So if that's the case now, then you mean to tell me Satan's okay with that. So he's not going to bother you. He's just going to let you go ahead. Well, I, just, I won't bother that Christian. I'll just let him go ahead and witness to people and try to lead people to Christ. i just let him go ahead and preach the gospel and, and quote scriptures all the time. That's going to change people's lives. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to mess with him at all. He's not going to do that. Because the worst thing that you could do, which is the best thing you could do, is use the word of God to try to... Uh, do it, as Jesus said, to go out into the hedges and the highways and compel men and women to come in. And so when, when we look at that, uh, we, we look at uh, Christians who, who should admit that this thing is a struggle. The uh, life between the flesh and the spirit is very much alive. And if a person would basically read uh, Galatians 5, Beginning with verse 16, where he talks to us, tells us to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you start looking at that, you begin to see all of these works of the flesh that are relevant in your life today. Mm -hmm. The struggle, you know, he talks about sexual sins, sins of society, and spiritual sins, you know, all down, which every Christian is dealing with in this struggle. Right. Right? And so you, you've got the poor of the flesh, the old man who doesn't want to die, who's had you for so many years, mm -hmm. yeah, versus the Spirit of God now that wants to have control also of your life. But you've got this battle going on. Tug of war. 
And, and that's exactly what it is. It's a tug of war. And, 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 and as we always say, whichever one you feed the most mm -hmm. is going to be the one to win. And so when I look at us in this struggle uh, where he talks about denying ourselves, you know, okay. self, mm. self wants to be satisfied. And, and, and when you look at self, you, you, you look at the flesh, you, 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 you look at that Galatians 5 and, and, and 16, and, and it talks about how it wars against one another. You know, they, they're warring for your mind. They're, they're warring for your, your body appetite. They, they, you, you have all these different types of sins that, that Paul has put in a category when you look at spiritual sins. That, uh, sins that people commit in society and, and, and then the, the sexual sins. All of these things are prevalent in people's lives, especially the Christians, and we struggle with them each and every day. And a lot of times we, we're not going to admit it because we, we've got people that look at us as supposed to be in this righteous Christian, which we are righteous. God has made us, you know, we, we are righteous. Alright, so, but they look at us as the type of person that does not supposed to commit sin. So hold up a second. Now, now stick a pen in type of person not supposed to commit sin. Because we got to back up just a little bit. All right. Because you first said, if any man will come after me. Okay. So let's let, 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 let back up with that. Let's so back I, up. I jumped to, to the deny myself All right. too quick. But <laughs> what made you come after him? What was it that you said enough? Well, to, to be honest with you, uh, and, and this is different for everybody. Yes, sir. Um, I've always realized ever since I was young that there was a call in my life. Okay. Um, didn't know exactly what the call was. Uh, but I knew that God was dealing with me. You know, I was raised up in a Christian home. Uh, Mom and Dad took us to church every Sunday. And, uh, my dad, uh, I think he missed his call. He was supposed to be a preacher. Uh, uh, some kind of way he got kind of detoured. That didn't, you know, didn't pan out for him. But, uh, but raised up in a Christian home, man, I always knew uh, from a young young age uh, about God, mm -hmm. you know, and so uh, mom kept us in church, made us go to Sunday school. Even sometimes when they went, they didn't make it. We still went. Uh, but coming up, uh, God just began to deal with me. You know, uh, a lot of times I was coming home from school and I would go. Uh, Go in the house, you know, at, back then, you know, uh, things weren't as bad as it was. So if you uh, at a young age, you know, you could stay in the house by yourself and you had to worry about anybody breaking in on you or the law getting you right. because your parents had got you there as young as you are. But uh, a lot of my friends wanted me to come outside and play. And uh, I would want to stay in and read my Bible. You know, I just had this... I guess you could say calling or just just this pull on me, you know, to read scripture. And so that's what I would do. I would go in the house and sit down and, and uh, open my Bible. And, and for some reason, I would always open it up to the book of Revelation. Mm. And I started reading the Revelation about the things that are going to happen, man, and tears just, just start flowing. And I, I didn't understand it. You know, uh, I just know I felt a certain way, and uh, and the tears would flow. And so, and every time I would read, I sit down, had my favorite chair. I sit down and start reading. Tears flow every time, and uh, and that's what I've done for many years, man. I would just come home from school instead of going out playing first. I would make sure I read the scripture first, man. And uh, as time went on. 
and, and it's a long story, man. You know, as time went on, I realized that that was a calling on my life. And uh, one day, after I got older, sitting in church, and as people would say, the spirit was high mm -hmm. in the church. And my wife was uh, was there that day, and uh, she said, "Say, baby, the church looked like it's full. You know, say it just looked like a, a, a cloud was in the church that specific day." Uh, and uh, and she said uh, she she saw it, you know it looked like a like a cloud and and, and I and I I thought about it, you know she was right that day you know so we were playing and I was playing guitar you know the band you know we was all playing and having a good time man, you know and uh, all of a sudden just out of nowhere it's like me and you talking right now. And I hear your voice just as clear as day. I heard a voice say, how many more souls would be lost because of your slow preaching? Man, I looked around, started looking, didn't see nothing, but I heard the voice just as plain as day as me and you sitting here talking right now. And your Damascus Road. And I never, exactly, it's almost like a Damascus Road experience, exactly. And, uh, and like I said, I always knew I had to call, but uh, didn't know exactly what it was. But that particular day, when that voice, then nobody else heard the voice. All of the musicians around me, nobody else heard the voice but me. And so once I heard that voice, church, when church was over, I went back to see the pastor. And as soon as I walked in the office, I said, uh, Pastor, I need to talk to you. He said, uh, I already know what it is. I said, you already know? He said, yeah. I said, how do you know what it is? And I haven't told you yet. She said, I already know. She said, he talked to you. How she knew? I couldn't tell you. Well, your story and mine are totally different. <laughs> But unlike most of these jokers, I was out there running the streets. Mm -hmm. When I lived here in Charlotte in the, I think like 89 to 92, oh man, clubs from Wednesday to Saturday, working, ripping and running, doing everything and anything I wanted to do. And for some reason, crime was picking up up here. People were just shooting or that always going on in Charlotte. But at that particular time, it was like unusually high. And I ended up back up in Waysboro and nothing going on there. So I didn't know that the Lord was ordering my steps. Right. But God knew what he was doing. So he got me out of an area that I was comfortable in to somewhere I like to say where I could finally hear from hear him. Right. Because all the noise and your favorite words and distractions going on kept me from hearing him. Right. And when I got out there, I didn't know nobody but my brother. Not a lot of things to do. Right. If I had to say, I'd never live out there because I went to visit one time. That place was too slow for me. <laughs> but God got away. Yeah. Of getting you right where He wants you to be. True. And I was out there for a while and I started just feeling I need to go to church. I need to go to church. Because I took my vacation like you, church. We say it all the time. Sun up to sundown is when we went to church Sunday. When I got old enough, I Took a break. I was tired. But like I said, when it's in you, <clears throat> it comes back. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I would go to the mall and I'd just start a conversation and ask somebody what's the church to go to. And they told me, so I'd visit this one and I'd visit that one. And when I started my job and the guy was working with me, he told me about the church he went to. So I finally visited. And it was actually doing Black History Month. And that man was preaching so hard, and I had an earring in my ear. You mm -hmm. see the old still that. That man was preaching so hard and got to talking about men with ponytails and earrings and 
flashy she calls and not taking care of the kids. I ain't have no kids at that point. He said something about the only thing I ever seen was an earring and a ponytail was a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just worked the way he said. And Rev. Mason, in one motion, I, I said, shoot. And when I came back up, the earring was gone. Right. Never been back in. Yeah. But he was preaching, and that preaching connected with me. Right. So eventually I joined the church and had taught with him. And he was one of those preachers that preached all over the country. Mm -hmm. Gone all the time. He kept telling the secretary, tell him, he would keep rescheduling. He said, tell him we're going to talk. Tell him we're going to do this. Tell him, well, he said, tell him just hold on, be patient. And so, you know, I'm just sitting there waiting to talk to him. And one night, and I started going to Sunday school, started going to Bible school. And I'm ashamed to say this, but the guy that told me to go to the church, yeah, he said, man, there's a lot of women in the church. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was walking and teaching that Sunday. He said, some folk ain't here for the right reason. And I ain't expecting that. He just kept going on. Some people hear this, some people hear that. And he just stopped by me and put his hand on my chain and said, some people came for the women, but the Lord called him to preach. Ain't that right, young man? I'm like, really? That's how you're going to do this? <laughs> that's how he introduced to the church that I had been called to preach. And that's how God is. Yep. And there's a cost to following Jesus. But when I finally got tired of living the life I was living, so you got to have a desire for Christ. There you go. Because you either have a desire for the world or you have a desire for Christ. Mm -hmm. You can't have both. Right. Two ways, two roads. You only have one or the other. So I had all of a sudden a desire for Jesus. I wanted to meet know more about him. I wanted to learn more about him. So I, just, I did. I started going to Sunday school. And it was at that point in time when I really learned about God and I learned about Jesus. Because mm -hmm. one Sunday that pastor preached a sermon, the introduction of God. Then the next Sunday he preached a sermon, the introduction of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it made it so prominent. Right. So I wanted to know more and more and so in order to come after him, you first got to have a desire. Because if you're going to come after Christ, you got to leave who you were hanging out with. It's true. And you were only hanging out with the devil. So you can't have them both. And so you know, you've heard that also. Some people try to run with the devil and hold him, or walk with God and hold run with the devil. Something like that. You right. can't do them both. That's true. They're in that struggle that we're going to get to. You know? Right. But there's got to be the, this desire that you want to leave the ways of the world mm -hmm. and come find out about this Jesus. It's true. The one that Mama sung about and talked about and told me I needed to get to know him. I won't try to hear that day. One grandmama told me about I won't try to hear none of that. I was enjoying what I was doing. That's true. Having fun doing what I was doing. And like you said, people get up and testify. And that's one thing I hated. I stayed in my miserable world of sin so long. <laughs> if it was so miserable, why you stay in it so long? Got it right. Sin is not it's miserable, but it's not miserable <coughs> to the flesh. Right. The flesh enjoys sin. That's why people sin. Because the, the flesh is satisfied. But the spirit is not. That's true. And some people turn the spirit off because they have not turned on their desire for Christ. They'll call on them when they need him. Right. Lord, help me. Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise you I'll go to church. I won't do this, I won't do that. <laughs> He's just like a bellhop. A spiritual Santa Claus, as somebody said. But that you gotta have a desire for Christ, and that desire has to be real. You gotta understand that you got to turn your back on the world 
and turn to Christ. It's true. And it's not going to be easy. It's true. But it's worth it. Amen. It is worth it. He said, if any man will come after me. Now look who you come after. It's true. The son of the most high God. You're coming after the one that was in the beginning when the beginning was begun. You're coming after the one that the word says all things were made by him. You're coming after the one that, let me just go and cut a couple of fields. Ended up on Calvary's cross. So that our souls wouldn't be lost. You're coming after a hero, a friend, a provider, a doctor, a lawyer, a peace giver, a shelter, mm -hmm. a bridge. It's true. Look at all he is. That's who you're coming after. Right. He said, if any man will come after me, here we go. Let him deny himself. Not easy. What Paul said in Romans 7. What I would do do. Evil is always good. The good that I would do. Mm -hmm. I do not. The evil that I would not do. That I do. That's what I do. Yeah. I don't understand this thing. Because mm -hmm. there's that, that tug of war. That spiritual tug of war. The flesh and the spirit fighting for it. And the sad thing is a lot of people are going to let the flesh win. Yeah. Yeah. Because they live in a constant state of gratifying the flesh. Yeah. Now, Paul even says this is a hard thing. Paul said, I die daily. I beat my body into success. Mm -hmm. Plus, I tell that man, no, go, go sit down. You ain't going nowhere. Sometimes I wanted to go somewhere. I'm like, no, you don't need to go there. Nothing good going to come out of it. And it ain't always easy to say no. But it's always beneficial. Right. You leave some trouble behind when you say no. Deny myself. Self like to do what self want to do. Okay. Self know how to cuss. Yeah. Self don't want to say God bless you when somebody cuss you out. Mm -hmm. Self don't want to put the hands in the pocket when somebody strike you on one cheek and say, hey, you missed this one. <laughs> Not self. Self want to show you, I know how to throw hands too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can retaliate back. Self don't yeah. always think holy. All these folks was robbing around talking about I'm blessed and highly favored in the Lord. Got some of the craziest stuff running through their mind. But if we could see people's mind, yeah. we'll see what they were thinking. Self got issues. Self yeah. got problems. Self want to go back out sometime. Self want to go see people who self ain't supposed to go see. Self want to do things that know are going to get them in trouble with God. See, when you please in self, the devil has it. Right. Right. You know, when you, when you talk about the beginning of if any man, and um, when you look at this, if any man would come after me, mm. uh, that's the first part, if any man would come after me. Because one of the biggest quest, uh, uh, I, I guess, issues that we run into with, with people that are unsaved is that when you say, if any man would come after me, first question is their mind is why? There you go. Why should I come after you? You know, what, what, what's the benefit for me oh, man. for coming after you? Oh, Lord. You know, because Jesus is stating that if, uh, if any man <laughs> is going to 
come after me. All right? One of the things that he has to do, and, and notice how he says the first thing he must do, uh, he has to deny himself. That ain't easy, Dr. Me. No, no, it ain't easy. It ain't easy because we've been taught, and, 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 and you can even take it to school. We've, we've been taught. Uh, even, even when we was in school, one of the things the teachers used to always ask us all the time, what we want to be when we, uh, when we grow up. And, and it's like, uh, I want to be a, you know, they, they ask the question, well, Jenny, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman. You know, everybody at a young age has these uh, dreams right. of wanting to be a uh, whatever that is that they desire. You know, if they they like being uh, like a police officer. Well, they, as a little child, you had these dreams that that's what you wanted to be, and so you begin to put all of these things. In, in your mind right there that sort of builds a, a, a foundation to where now it puts us in a uh, situation or puts us in a position mentally that that's what I'm going to strive after because that's what I want to be. So if I want to be that, I will need to do everything I need to do to start preparing myself for that. So now, these desires that I have and these uh, dreams of becoming a, a fireman or a police officer, that's what we pursue. You know, and, and, and get, there's nothing wrong with being those. Those professions there are beneficial to uh, society, you know, because you're helping people in some type of way, you know, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, or a police officer, or fireman, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with those things. So if, if that's their desire, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem comes when those things like that, and, and, and let me let me back up a little bit. You got some people, their, their main goal is to be a professional uh, basketball player, a mm -hmm. professional football player, or a professional singer, right. or whatever it is. All right? Those are desires and ambitions that people have. And the problem with those things is that those things could be a hindrance in your decision making of whether you follow Christ or not. Because those things there, people will say, okay, well, if I decide to follow Christ, then I can't do what I want to do because I have to put so much time in with it. Or uh, and, and, you, and you look at it, even Jesus, when he started calling the disciples, you know, he's walking and he's calling each disciple, he, he walked on and he said two words when he, when he called them. He said, follow me. That's all he said. Follow me. So whatever their occupation was or whatever they was doing, they gave it up. To follow him. So they, they are actually wonderful examples of denying yourself. Wonderful example, yeah. But what people don't understand also is that following Jesus comes at a cost. It does. That first cost is the denial part. Right. That's what I said, well, how is that a cost? Again, self has been used to doing what self wanted to do. Yeah. And now you got to say no to self. Right. Now self got to be told no. Like a little baby. Well, why can't I do this? Because we don't do this no more. This is not what we do. True. So self says I can. You can, but you can't. Right. <laughs> you can, but there's a cost. Now we don't follow the dictates and mandates of the devil. Now we pursue or we follow after the dictates and the mandates and the words of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Self says, do your own thing. Denying yourself says, listen to Jesus, the Spirit of God. 
Self says, I can go where I want to go. The Spirit of God says, true, you can, but you represent me now. Right. You can't go everywhere now. Some people say, well, I, I can go back to those and look at it. Yes, some people can, but some people can't. But if, if, if you're going back to those things, what's, what's your purpose and reason for going back? Hopefully you're going back to be an example. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will go, and some people will be that light. Right. But some people will go thinking they're stronger than they are and end up right back where they were. Mm -hmm. Self does not have to listen to the Spirit of God. Right. The one who has denied themselves, that's where our struggle comes in. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying that once you get on this train, what you used to do, how you used to behave, how you used to live, that's old. We're doing a new thing now. Mm -hmm. It's his. It becomes his way. You're no longer at Burger King. Have it your way. So that's what self did. Right. So that was self one. That self did. Didn't matter what she was. Self did a lot of what David did with Uriah's wife. Don't care she married. Mm -hmm. Self drank and got drunk like Noah did. Self-hearted like the people at the foot of the mountain when Moses was gone for a while. But the God-man now says, I have a new master. And that's the problem. People don't understand. You are serving somebody. You are following somebody. You do have a problem. Right. And it's only one of two people. Mm -hmm. Either God is your father or the devil is. Either God is your master or the devil is. Either you're following God in his ways or you're following the Lord in his way. There's no in between. If any man will come after me, if he desires to come after me, now he got to make that decision to deny himself. It's true. And that word deny means to totally disown. Totally give up yourself. You give up your rights. And, and that's that's a powerful word to totally do it. To utterly separate, to completely disown from something. That's what the word deny means in the Greek. So there's an utter separation, there's a complete disownment of who I used to be. Now. Am I totally, totally? No, that joke of the sin man is still in me. The sin nature is still there. It's true. But the spirit of God is there too. Mm -hmm. So now it's about what you said, who you feeding. Right. What do you mean who you feeding? All right, let's put it this way. How much are you in your word? Mm -hmm. How much are you in... And I'll, I'll agree. There's some word on Facebook. There's good scriptures that catch you sometimes right at the right time. Mm -hmm. But the spirit will give you something to catch you too. It's true. If you sit down. Sometimes, have you ever just sit down and open your Bible and where you started reading was what you needed? Yeah. I mean, right there, that's what you needed, what you were going The spirit man has to be fed the things of God. What are those? The word of God. Got to be some praying and some fasting. And you remember we were just talking yesterday or today, or a couple of days ago about when the man brought his boy to the church and the church, the disciples, the disciples couldn't help him. And Jesus comes down and Jesus said, how long have you been like this? The man says, of a youth of a child. And he said, I brought him to your disciples, but your disciples couldn't help. Jesus said, bring him to me. 
And Jesus asked the man, he told him, all things are possible if you can believe. The man was honest, and that's what some people won't do, is be honest with Christ. When Christ already knows what we are doing, right? Yeah. The man said, Lord, I believe, but there's some meat, there's some, there's some stuff in me. He said, help my unbelief. Self was still in the way of his belief. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my doubt, my unbelief. Jesus said, all things are possible if you can believe. And somebody needs to know, all things are possible. True. That impossible situation somebody dealing with right now is yeah. possible if they believe. Mm -hmm. If it's in the will of God. And sometimes God will do something just to show you who he is. Yeah. But Jesus heals the man. You know where I'm going. The disciples got with Jesus later. They said, Lord, why couldn't we do that? Jesus said, this kind comes by fasting and prayer. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff that we want from God. There's some stuff we, we, we desire. There's some stuff we, we have on our wish list. There's some, there's some disease. There's some sicknesses we want gone. There's some elevations we want. But the Word said there's some jobs we want. There's some marriages, some relationships. There's cars, homes, whatever. Jesus said, this kind come except by fasting and prayer. True. That's what, and, and fasting is a hard thing sometimes when it comes to self. Yeah. You got to be nice. There you go. <laughs> you, you're going <coughs> to go for this long without food or water? And I hear people say they fast from and I'm just, I'm, I'm going here. People say they fast from TV or social media and more sodas or candy and stuff like that. I mean, it's from sweets. Well, true fasting is no food, no water. Because the Bible says when Jesus was laid of the Spirit, 40 days and 40 nights, he had fasted. He was on That's true fasting. Other stuff is just sacrifice. God, I'm sure God may accept it, but true fast mm -hmm. is water and food. I'm wrong, somebody can look. Right. But that's a form, the fasting is a form of denying yourself. Mm -hmm. We were talking, it was like, when you deny yourself the food, and food is essential, right. but God will give you Spiritual substance to the man. But to deny the flesh the things that it wants, mm -hmm. that's a battle. It's true. And the only way to win that battle, again, you gotta be honest with the God. God, I mean, sometimes you know, the Bible said, let the weak say I'm strong. Right. Well, he says, my strength is made perfect in weak. We got to learn how to rely and lean on the one we've decided to follow, to go after him. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just said we've got to learn how to do that. And that's what I like uh, over in the book of Corinthians, he talks about. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we know when we look at that in the Greek, it means that all things are becoming new. Uh, it doesn't all happen instantaneously, just like that. But over time, uh, as we talked about before in during the sanctification process, all of this is, is, is beginning to happen. Things are becoming new. Uh, you are, if you're a Christian and, and you're applying uh, the Word of God to your life, you, you, you're praying and, as you say, uh, fasting and doing the things that it takes to grow spiritually then you're going to get better at denying yourself because you're feeding what will help you to deny yourself more than you're feeding self itself. 
Because if you feed self, self is used to being fed. Self is used to having its own way. Self is used to being satisfied. You've done that your whole life. David even said, you know, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So my whole mindset from being a, a small child all the way up until I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior has always been to satisfy self. self. It's always been like that. And so now the Holy Spirit, when you become a spiritual being now, you have a spirit living within, within you. It sets up that struggle now where the spirit says, okay, this is a new life. You know, the new man now. You know, you, you got to take off the old man and put on the new. You know, it's like changing clothes. That, that's what you're doing. You're changing clothes. And so it's, it's how fast you change the clothes. Some people might change. You, if, if you look at it uh, as, as an example, uh, some people, even though when they're changing clothes, they're putting on their shirt, some people put their shirt on faster than you do. Some people put their pants on faster than you do. Some of them put it on slower than you do. You know, it's just a matter of time. How fast do we do that? How fast do we grow? How fast are we illuminated by the Holy Spirit to where we learn and we understand the truth <coughs> that he's leading and guiding us to? And, and not only that, but for all of us, how fast or how obedient are we to what we learn while we're growing? If the Holy Spirit illuminates the Word of God and leads you first, you know, He leads you and guides you into all truth. Once you see that truth, you see the knowledge, or you get the knowledge of that truth and the understanding, the hardest thing, which shouldn't be hard, but it is, the hardest thing now is application. Am I going to apply what I know? Some people will apply. When we talk about Christians, some will apply it, some of them won't. And we're like, well, you know, if, if I apply that truth right now, I, I have to give up my girlfriend. Mm. If I apply that truth right now, I have to give <coughs> up my boyfriend, and, and, and I'm, I'm not sure that's what I want to do right now. Not right now. Uh, I, I, I think I'm going to wait a while. Now, mm. even though you know Hold the on. truth, Hold on. you won't do it. No. And so the, the more you do that, you're basically not denying self, but you're letting self have his way with you. You're letting self stay in control. <coughs> and the whole thing uh, is that God is trying to get that old man to start dying so the new man <laughs> can start to live. <laughs> exactly. And so he, he, he talked about, uh, again, Paul talked about Romans seven twenty four again, you know, about that 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 battle that's going on between the flesh and the spirit. There's this uh, flesh is lusting against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. And he said that these two are contrary one to the, one to the other. other, you know. And uh, we don't always do even the things we want to do. And and Paul expressing it, he's expressing that. Uh, in his own conflict, he was saying, hey, I'm struggling with the same thing. I want y'all to know, even though I'm the, the great apostle Paul, as y'all call me, even though I'm the great apostle Paul, I'm struggling with this same thing that y'all are struggling with. You know, even though I wrote all of these epistles, and even though, uh, what did he say, I went up to the third heaven before, you know, and I've seen some things that basically blew my mind. Can you talk about yeah, he said, I can't even talk about this stuff. It, it, it blows my mind so much. You know, I can't even put it into words. You know, and, and so here you got him. He says, I would do the same stuff. This same stuff is the same exact thing that I'm going through. You know, it got even to the point the way he says, uh, uh, he says, and that which I do, I would not, and that which I would yeah. not. That's what I do. And you and you said that earlier. You said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body okay. of death? And so Paul lets us know that this thing about denying yourself, 
is a thing that's going to be a struggle. But we also have to look at it too. He also said, greater is he that's in me, that's in me than he that's in the world. All right? If you get that, which you should as a Christian, he's telling you, now you got to learn how to tap in to this inner strength that's greater. Because he says, greater is he that's in me. Where is he at? He's in me. He's already in you to help you do exactly what God calls you to do. See, that's, that's one of the reasons why he sent us the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is going to be there to enable us, to help us do what we can't do. Because if we can do what God wanted us to do, we'll be able to do it in the natural. But since you can't do it in the natural, you need something else that's supernatural. That makes sense. There are, there are those that think they can walk with God and walk in the flesh too. Well, uh, Paul talks about those in Corinthians and calls them carnal Christians because they have chosen not to walk in the flesh. I mean, not to walk in the spirit, but they've chosen to walk according to the flesh. And so Paul calls them carnal. They are carnal-minded. And see, and that's where the battle starts right there. And that's where the battle ends, in the mind. He says that they are carnal-minded. Not spiritually minded, but carnal-minded. When you're carnal-minded, you basically say, okay, Lord, I know what the word says, but that's not what I want to do. These things that the, the flesh produces, or back again, over in Galatians 5, he says, that I want, I understand that you said, if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the, the, lust of the flesh. All right? Then he talks about the lust of the flesh on down through that chapter, okay? All right, so we have a choice. <coughs> Because we, we can either live or walk, as, as the Bible says, uh, word walk means uh, live. Right. We can either live according to the flesh, or either we can walk or live according to the spirit. So he's telling us right there, you have to choose which one you want. Spirit is there to help you live the spiritual life. But the thing is, however you choose, then that's the way you're going to walk. And so as a carnal Christian, carnal Christians have chose to walk according to the flesh and not according to the spirit. And, now, and, and that's, that's, that's not only dangerous, but it is also an insult to God. And the reason why, because most Christians tell you what, when they're walking according to to the flesh, they say, well, I can't help it. I can't help myself that I do those things that... Hold up, hold up, hold up. They just told you. They, 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 they told the truth. Yeah. I can't help myself. Exactly. You can't. Exactly. You can't. You have to submit. It's true. And, and that's the point I'm getting to. They say, I can't help myself for doing those things. Well, God is saying, well, the reason why you can't help yourself is because the help that I've given you, you are not even taking advantage of, which is the Spirit. He said, I've got the Spirit right here to help. And you quote it, you quote it all the time. Great is he that's in me as he is in the Word. And, and, and he is in the Word. See, we just say that. But do you really know what you're saying? Is he greater? Is he greater? If you ask the question, that greater is he that's in me than he is where? Well, if he's greater, let him show himself how great he is. You give him the opportunity to do that, and he's not going to make you. See, that's one thing about the Holy Spirit. He don't make you do nothing. The Bible says he's there to lead you, to guide you, and do all truth. He's not going to make you do anything. 
But he's going to show you that he's there to help you do it. He gives you the supernatural help that you need in order to overcome this supernatural the, or the supernatural things that God wants you to, to, uh, to overcome. You had to have supernatural help. Because if you could have done it under the natural help yourself, then he never would have had a reason to give you the Holy Spirit. And so when, when, you, when you look at us making all of these excuses about not being able to deny ourselves, we, we, we've said exactly what you just said. Uh, I'm trying to do it on my own. Basically, they say they don't want to. And that's true, too. That's true, too. Because if you want to overcome something. The help is there to help you overcome. Right. You just haven't tapped into the help. You haven't tapped into it. It's like Jesus in Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Exactly. Let exactly. a man will hear my door. And open the head of the You got to do your part. You have to do it. Exactly. Open the door. Exactly. If any man will come after me. Hmm. Again, I'm just thinking about who you coming after. Right. And why? But why? Why has to be... You have to have gotten to a point to where you understand that there's more to, than where you are. There's more than doing it your way. There's more to just doing the same old, same old. Because that's really all one does when they live without Jesus. Or he's not their Savior and their Lord. You're just doing the same old, same old. It's true. And basically the same old, same old is sin. It's true. He came. To die for man's sin. And, 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 when you, and when you think about it, he's simply saying, if you want eternal life, come here. If you want to live, because you're going to die. Right. Again, it's two ways, heaven and hell. You're going to miss one, you ain't going to miss them both. He's offering us eternal life. It's a cost. Now, if it costs him to give us eternal life, if it costs him his life, it's going to cost us to live this life. It's true. And we deal with that more on next time when we talk about and take up his cross. You know, I... I uh when, when I look at that why, because when he says, follow me, uh, when I look at him, he says, come after me. If, if any man, if any man comes after me, right? Mm -hmm. If any man would come after me, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at this, he, he first of all, And the question that goes off in his mind is going to be, why should I do this? Because, see, because when, when, you, when he's asking them that, that's more powerful than what people realize. Because he's saying, if any man would come after me, and they're like, hey, who are you, Jim? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, they're going to ask that question. Yeah. I, I, I read my hand. I'd be like, Peter, I, I got this one. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He's just like, well, who are you? I mean, if, if I'm coming after you, what, what do you mean by coming after you? You know, who, who are you supposed to be? Well, let, let me tell you who, who he's supposed to be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. In the beginning and the end. He's the mm -hmm. first and the last. He's God's monogamous that which is unique and one of a kind. He's the only answer to the sin dilemma. He's the answer 
to Adam's missile. Yeah, let me get like, let me get colloquial. Now he bread in a starving land, water in dry places, shelter in the time of a storm, a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless, friend that stick closer than a brother. Who is he? He's the one that came down through 42 generations with Born, he's the one that I like to say, and some people don't grab this, but he was older than his mama and younger than his mama at the same time. Who, who is he? He's the one that unstopped deaf ears. He's the one that laid, made the lame walk and made the dumb talk. He, he's the one that picked me up and turned me around. And, yeah, I'm being colloquial. Kind of Place my feet right. on yeah. the solid ground. Who is he? He married a little baby. Joseph's stepson. Yeah, Joseph's stepson. Who is it? Who is it? He, he's the omniscient one. He knows everything. He's the omnipresent one. He's the one that's everywhere at the same time. He's the omnipotent one. He's the one that's got all power in his hand. He's the one that folks say is good all the time and all the time he's good. He's the one that picked your grandmama up off of her sick bed when the doctor said they'd done all you could do but the next thing you know grandmama back up at home doing what grandmama used to do. He's the one that let you live from that car wreck you had. He's the one that gave you the job that you had. He's the one that gave man the ability to build the house, the roof, the structure, the apartment that you stay in. He's the one that gave man the ability to create cars and planes and automobiles and boats and things like that. He's the one that lets you talk on your cell phone. He's the one that the Bible says in him you live, you move, you have your being. Who is he? Who isn't he? That's why you follow him. And I ain't even touched the surface of who he is. That's right. Who is he? So he's everybody. He is. Exactly. He's the one that John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And John goes down to verse 14 and says, and the word became flesh, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth, the only begotten of the Father. Who is he? He's the one that let me take a step, one foot in front of another. He's the one that gave me a job to go to. He's the one that keep me safe every time I get in my car and travel from point A to point B, regardless of where point A and point B is. He's the one that ain't let me catch COVID. He's the one that let the one catch COVID that didn't die, not die. Yeah. Who is he? Sure. He's the one that didn't let us die and go to hell when we should be there right now. Who is he? He's the one that keep your house safe. And even if somebody break in, you still here. Mm -hmm. Who is he? He the one that lets you breathe his air when you don't deserve it and I don't deserve it. Who is he? He's the one that supplies food for you to eat. You tell me how a brown cow can eat green grass and produce white milk. Mm -hmm. You tell me as you say. He's the one that said, and, and let us make man. And he formed man from the dust of the ground. Now, folk ain't thought about this, and I didn't think about it till you said, but how do you get wet blood out of dry dirt? <laughs> how do you get, watch it, how do you get red blood out of dry dirt? And bro. Yeah. Dry dirt. Who is he? Man, who is he not? He's the one, the only one, that can go to Calvary's cross and take nails. Now, he took nails in the head, but think about what he took before he got to the cross. That's right. Them 40 lashes. You know Roman law said that they couldn't hit a man 40 times, so they gave him the maximum minus one, which was 39. And on that thing called a cat of nine tails, and they done took that to a sexual thing now. But Jesus got beat with this thing. 
And they done took it and made it something sexual. You see how messed up the world is? But on this cat of nine tail, it was a whip that had nine pieces of leather on it. And at the end of every nine, I mean, every piece of leather was a sharp object. And can you imagine every time they, all nine of them things went in his back and tore skin away. And I'm pretty good at some simple math. And 39 times nine, Lord have mercy, is 351 holes, tail, rips, and tails. In his back. He the one that took that. He the one that when he was standing on the cross or hanging on the cross said, Father, forgive them. Wait a minute. He said, They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. He the one. What, what you don't mean? They whooped you. They beat you. They nailed your hand. Yeah, but they still didn't know what they were doing. He's the one that hung there and they put nails in his hand. I ain't talking about them little nails you get at the hardware store to hang up a picture. I'm talking about them railroad nails. They took, it's my understanding, a hammer that weighed eight pounds and beat that nail through his hand. And watch it, that nail didn't touch a bone in either hand. Can you imagine having a railroad nail put through your hand with an eight pound hammer? And then they hang you on the cross with three nails. Who is he? He's the propitiation for our sins. The redeeming sacrifice. Who is he? He's the advocate that John talks about. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not, but if you sin, or rather since you don't sin, you got an advocate with the Father. Who's the guy? He's your lawyer. Who is he? He's the one that stopped by the grave and said, show me where you laid in there. Mm -hmm. Lord, by now he's thinking, be quiet. Turn, turn, let me show you something. Hey, Lazarus, come here. Loose him and let him go. That's who he is. He got so much power, he can tell the devil to loose anybody and let him go. It's true. Who is he? He the one that was buried on Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like preaching now. <laughs> <laughs> but that is Sunday morning. Got him. With all power. He's the one that's coming back. He coming back. Some folks don't believe it, but he coming back. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's coming back. He coming back. He coming back. That, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, light will follow him. Because the alternative is condemnation. That's why you follow. So that why question for me. Uh, they understand the seriousness of it, and they understand the uh, benefits that come from it. There you go. And 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 they don't see that. You know that's why God has called us to be not only the light of the world, but we're also supposed to be the salt of the world. Now see. The salt, it's, it's, it's left up to us. He left it up to us to make them thirsty. See, we, we, if we don't make them thirsty, they never want to be uh, put it like this. If, if a person is not thirsty, then why would they need to drink? Because there is a natural, as a natural, the word eludes me right now. There's a natural appetite. Yeah, appetite of need that the body has. Exactly. For thirst. Mm -hmm. And just like with every human being, one reason, I'm so glad you went there, thank you, Lord, got one of them emails, mm -hmm. that people. Indulge in what they indulge in. They're trying to satisfy a thirst, but the thirst or the emptiness or the void that they're trying to satisfy yeah. only Christ can do. Right. But the spiritual thirst. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They they mistaken the spiritual thirst for a fleshly appetite. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
there, there's something within all of us that only Christ can satisfy. It's that void. Right. And what we did before we came to him, before we decided to come after him, we were searching for that that we didn't even realize. Right. And we thought we could find it in drugs, women, alcohol, music, cars, houses, games, whatever, money. But there's a, there's a void, there's a thirst, mm -hmm. and only God can satisfy. It's true. And in order to get that thirst quenched, We've got to deny ourselves. Last words, Pastor Drew. Um, when it comes to denying ourselves, um, that means that I have to uh, put an end of my own ambition my own goals, my own desires, there you go. Uh, my own self-worth. And, and, and I think with a lot of us, is, is we, we have to look at that when you start, and, and the Bible talks about it, where God gives us the desires of our own heart. Uh, when you delight yourself in the Lord, uh, the Bible talks about He'll give you the desires of your heart. Right. Okay? All right. But what happens in that is that your desires mm -hmm. are going to become His desires. That is right there. Uh, and so. If your desires are going to become his desires, then the, you will have the desires that he wants to give you <laughs> because you didn't even know that those were the, the desires that, that are really uh, of your heart. Because that's what he's saying. He gives you the desires of your heart. Uh, and Christ knows what those desires are. There's a lot of desires that we think are not what we should have. So he has a way of being able to do that. And so that's the, uh, again, the struggle comes up where if I have to do all of that, then basically they sort of look at the crisis sort of like a killjoy. Uh, everything that I think that makes me happy, uh, my ambitions, my goals, my desires, myself, pleasing myself, uh, uh, if I follow him, all of that in. You gotta give it up. Yeah, gotta give it up. And and, and uh, those are things that I won't don't wanna give up. So it's gonna be a struggle. And and I think over time with us we begin to uh, let things go. I know in your in your Christian life and in my Christian life, I even after I got saved I still hung on to some things that I thought was uh, the right thing to do. But as my desire for the Lord uh, became more of his desires, I started letting those things go. And, and I think that's what the biggest part of it is, is beginning to grow in Christ by most, mostly, or, or I should I say uh, totally, as you use the word, totally beginning to be obedient to everything that he's called me to do. And, and that came with a lot of trust, too. You know, uh, Lord, okay, I don't see it kind of like the way you see it right now, but I'm going to trust you anyway. Right. I'm going to step out on faith, and I'm going to trust you. And then the more I trust him over time, he began to show me, oh, okay, he got my best interest at heart. You know, he's, he knows exactly what I need. And so you, you start denying yourself even more because what has developed now is this much more greater desire for him because he showed you who he is. Yeah, who he is. Yeah, and he, he showed is. you how his way is much better. There you go. But it's like you said before, I had to learn. 
how it is. Yeah, first. Through trial and error, tribulation. through heartaches and pains, through tribulation, <laughs> all the stuff I had to go through, I put it like this, I had to go through the spiritual school of hard knocks in order to get to the point to where uh, I'm on my way to graduate. Still on the way from graduating yet. Still in the school of hard knocks. But I'm learning because I'm going from one level to another level. Uh, and God only knows as far how far he has to take us before he gets us where he wants us. Amen. Well, I've learned and I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody like three years learning this. No, I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about a flower that I can't have it my way. Yeah. yeah. I can't have it my way. Right. If I don't do it his way, it's not going to work out. It's true. Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected mind. A lot of times we in the way of what we want. Right. We just in the way. And when we get out of God's way, God will have his way. Self keeps us in the way. It does. Self keeps us in God's way. And God is not going to force us to control ourselves. Mm -hmm. One way, one thing we do when we control ourselves and we deny ourselves, we show us how much we love him. We show him how much we love him. Right. True. Because his word says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's his commandment. If you're coming after me, if you want to walk this road, if you want to get from earth to glory, there's a formula. Right. Deny yourself. Like I said, we'll pick these, this, this one of these two again. Take up your cross. And, find, and look what he said. You got to deny yourself first. Your cross, you, you got to bear your own burdens, your own cross, your own load. There it is right here. The right. cross is a load. Yeah. And when you get your cross, then you can follow me. Mm -hmm. Because watch this. Just like Simon helped him bear his cross, he'll help us bear ours. Right. It's true. Self. We got to learn how to get self out the way. Whenever we get self out the way, God will do some mighty things in our life. It's true. If we are coming after him. Yeah. And there's no reason to get self out the way if you're not coming after him. Mm -hmm. But once you have that desire and you make that decision to deny yourself, mm -hmm. then God will start doing some things in our life. That concludes our lesson for the night on John six. I mean, Mark, Matthew, well, 16. You know, sixteen and twenty-four. Just this portion of it. Uh, we'll be back again probably Sunday night or maybe next Tuesday. We don't know just yet. But join us. We'll be on live and we'll we'll, we'll jump into the take up your cross portion of it. And we'll cross. I got one on my own for the kids gave me at school. Okay. Yeah. The cross. You know, a lot of people want to tattoo a cross on them or wear a cross mm -hmm. on their neck. But the cross ain't to be tattooed or worn, it's to be carried. And we'll get into that next week. Thank you for joining us. As always, leave your questions, comments, let us know what you think. And Again, we'll be right back here at the table real soon. God bless you. We appreciate you. Have a good night.